Hi, everybody. Thank you so much for joining us today. I'm really excited to be here with writer Liz Monument, um, who also happens to be one of our ultimate novel writing tutors. Welcome, Liz. Thank you so much for being here with me today. My pleasure. Um, so just um, in case um, you haven't come across Liz and her work before, just to give you a little bit of an introduction um, to Liz. So um, Liz is a full time novelist as well as a writing coach, an editor, and she works with all kinds of fiction ranging from sci-fi to historical. Her first two novels are science fiction and her third is a literary drama fusion written for a PhD in creative writing. Prior to becoming a full-time novelist and script editor, Liz also taught in the creative arts field for 22 years, and she now works with a range of clients, including Jericho Writers and HarperCollins. So welcome, everybody. Thank you so much um, if you're just hopping on to the chat. Um, so Liz is going to be here today answering all of your questions, anything you want to know about writing, about getting published, about editing your work, anything you want to know. So please do just drop your questions into the comments, and we'll do our best to answer that for you today. So let's get started. Um, so Liz, um, could you explain a little bit about how you approach writing fiction as a writer? Um, well, I'm terrible for writing what I call test scenes, which never launch me into the full novel, but are more like an experiment in voice. So I will start yeah. off with a chunk of work, not even a full chapter sometimes, just to get a feel for the person that I'm writing about and the scenario. And I find that that's a great way not to build your expectations too high. It's more like an yeah. experiment rather than expecting to sit straight down and yeah. come up with a, a, you know, a final character of a novel. I think it takes a bit longer than that. Yeah, yeah, that's really interesting. So it's kind of, it's a kind of like test and learn almost approach. It's, Absolutely, it's, and it's yeah. interesting to, um, remember that my very first creative writing teacher used to drive her nuts when I said <laughs> I'm writing a test scene for you Sarah she used to say no 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 not a test scene you're writing a novel no 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 the novel <laughs> won't work yet so it is possible to to approach writing a novel in in any number of different ways there's no yeah. right or wrong answer yeah it's kind of what works best for you really and what you think is going to you know help you to get where you want to be at the at the end Absolutely. of the day yeah absolutely. yeah how do you kind of um apply that approach to your own students then because obviously you work a lot with other writers and authors yeah. from you know all at all different stages of their career and in their writing journeys so how do you um kind of take that approach and like help to guide them in, in their writing journey um the the authors who i work with from hachette and harper collins are already queued up for publication so before yeah. i see them they've been through a lot of hands. So it tends to be yeah. um, a, a quite a light touch or a suggestion about a subplot. But the clients yeah. who I work with for ongoing tuition are at all different stages. Yeah. Um, and um, I think the important thing is firstly to try to connect with what they want to achieve. Yeah. Um, and to get that properly sorted out in their heads because sometimes you can work with a client who um, wants to write a uh, literary fiction but they've got lots of thriller tropes and they're not yet yeah. bringing those out properly so it's yeah. all about looking at the whole package what the writer wants to achieve where that writer starts from and what's yeah. the best way forward yeah no definitely and that that sounds like a really really good approach to me um as a non-writer it's it's always fascinating to me to kind of hear these like from the inside like how how you you kind of go about it how and also you know as as someone who is mentoring what like you know how you kind of help to get writers there because I think it's so easy if you are a writer to kind of get stuck in a little rut I guess and it's sometimes hard to kind of find a way through and it's Absolutely. also yeah, yeah it's helpful that, to just where, kind of get that yes that's where the editor can really help just to yeah sometimes to strip away the peripheries and to look at what it, it really sits at the core of what you're trying to do yeah. whether that's genre that you're not connecting with properly or whether that's the voice of the main character it, it could almost be anything yeah. um and yeah a good editor and coach will always get cut, try to cut straight to the heart of what you're trying to do and yeah. then work out a strategy to move you on down the line yeah and would you say that strategy has to be tailored to kind of each writer or their kind of key key kind of um techniques and things that you can do 
for, that would apply to any writer to kind of like help help move the story along. Yeah, there are certainly a few techniques, and we look at yeah. those in whether it's in mentoring or the novel writing course, or, or or even general editorial on just one script, a reader's report or a developmental edit. We'll look yeah. at, at really important things like working with immersion fantasy or the difference between showing and telling, yeah. keeping dialogue really punchy. So there are central core things, but then within that, there's always room to to look at what a writer wants to do. For example. Is the writer looking to be slightly more literary and needing to home in on a particular theme, which tend to be built up better as you edit rather than on the first draft? So an oh, author can have it. Yeah, it's amazing how it works, really. And yeah, I think the good thing about writers being editors is that we have fallen foul of that. We've all made these mistakes. We all know yeah. how long a job it is. So yeah. we're in a, a, a really good position to help and coach. Um, people who are sort of coming up through the ranks as well yeah no definitely um so I guess yeah that's kind of interesting what you said you know about how like with literary fiction it kind of comes together more a lot later down the line and again and I guess with other genres do you find that it's more helpful to do a lot of planning before you kind of embark or is um, it I think it depends on the individual because yeah. I've heard it described that there are two kinds of writers a plotter and a pantser and I've worked out from those two that I'm a bit of a pantser, but I do find yeah. it a bit insulting that we're supposed <laughs> not to plan because we spend an awful lot of time actually working it out on the page rather than working yeah. it out beforehand. Yeah. Then, yeah and, and there are probably more than just those two methods as well. There are probably half a dozen ways of, of planning the novel and of putting one together. Yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah, that's just so interesting to me. Um, so... Could you just like talk to us a little bit about, um, you know, when you are looking at someone's work, I guess, what kind of draws you to a piece of fiction? Like what makes someone's writing like really stand out for you? Like what are you kind of like looking for? What like grips you when, when you're reading something new? Um, in the intro, it would be definitely a sense of suspense and a strong voice. So yeah. strong voice is the way the character comes across, whether it's in first or third. Um, and the sense of suspense comes from whatever drama has been introduced that makes me as a reader ask a question. Yeah. So they act like hooks. And if you can get hooks into your introduction, you will draw the reader in anyway. Yeah. And from there, it's how it develops and pans out and, and so on. But yeah, definitely voice and the hooks in the first paragraph or so. Yeah. And is voice something, I guess, that you can, t can teach someone? Or do you think it's something that, you know... A writer kind of has naturally within them and then you kind of develop or is it something that you can kind of build from scratch would you say? Um, I think some voices are very easy and spring onto the page immediately for any writer whereas others yeah. take a lot more fretting about and a lot more time to develop. Um, yeah. One of the course materials I'm developing at the moment for um, the Jericho novel writing course is voice mm. and style and I've decided to, that it would be easiest summed up by being broken down into at least four elements, including yeah. dialogue, whether you use first or third, what genre you write, because that has a huge effect on the voice. Yeah. Um, and I can't, I can't remember what I've actually used as the fourth item, but I thought that splitting it up into four like that would break voice down yeah. um, and would it, it, give, it allows us to pinpoint um, facets of voice and to make them stronger by understanding how they work yeah yeah I think that's a really helpful approach just to kind of have that you know kind of full 360 way of like looking at it and just really kind of you know making sure it's it's properly fleshed out in that way yeah yeah so all the all the boxes are ticked yeah yeah definitely um, welcome everyone. If you're just joining us, um, I'm here with writer Liz Monument, um, who's also a tutor on Jericho Writer's Ultimate Novel Writing course. Um, please do drop any questions that you have for Liz into the chat box and um, we'll do our best to answer them. Um, she's here, she can ask, answer any of your questions about writing, about editing, about how to get published. So do, do just drop us, drop us any questions that you do have. Um, so just, I guess, like going back to your kind of um, work as, as a mentor like what why do you enjoy like mentoring and editing people like what kind of is the thing that you enjoy the most about helping people to develop their craft it has to be watching writers grow because um, 
the longer you stick with a writer, the bigger yeah. sense of that personal growth as a writer you get. And it's absolutely fantastic to see a client take on some aspect of advice and suddenly the yeah. fiction just flies off the page and it's amazing. It comes alive. The characters come alive. And yeah. it's really great to watch that personal growth along that journey, to be holding somebody's hand through the writer's journey and then eventually they take off and they don't need you anymore. <laughs> Oh, but it must be just like so, you know, lovely to see that happen um, and see writers like really just kind of like, you know, get into their own, I guess, flow as it were and just, yeah, just it reach is, that yeah. point of, yeah. It's oh, that's... great to, to be able to input on that and to say that you've helped that, that is, it's so rewarding. Yeah. Have there been kind of any like moments um, in your career as, as helping other authors that stand out for you? Um, any kind of special moments? Oh, definitely. Um, yeah. Yeah. Sometimes, sometimes it's with straightening a plot out and watching a, a you know, the story really leap off the page. And other yeah. times, it's um, it's voice and really sort of nailing that voice. And and at times, it can be things like um, one of the um, tutorials I I run here is yeah. about using language to um, enhance atmosphere. And it yeah. can be watching a writer actually realise that they can really craftily manipulate the reader with word yeah. choices, and it can be a revelation. And many <laughs> of these things were to me when, when my first writing tutor coached me, having yeah. somebody actually explain the way fiction works and why it works like that is a revelation if you've never had a tutor before or an editor, it's great. Yeah, I mean, that is just so interesting. It's almost like there are, I think, you know just from the outside sometimes you just kind of assume that it's you know it's people just it just comes to the writer and then they just get it out on the page and there's maybe no like planning and it's just all you know just kind of but like there's definitely you know like um a structure to it and you know things that you can do to kind of achieve the desired effect and kind of like once you learn the rules as well like you can then you know I guess experiment and, and break them it's like I guess it's like with painting it's like you know learn the kind of basic techniques and you know and then once you you've mastered those you can then go on to kind of like you know take off and, and do your own thing as well to be more free with them yes yeah. I often say to clients that one of the the most misrepresentative things that we're told over social media and the internet <laughs> is that anybody can knock out a novel in six months and become a bestseller and it just right. isn't true yeah. and you know it is such a long haul it takes such a long time but that is normal yeah. so part of what tutors do is encourage clients to understand that this writing it's a long journey you can never learn it overnight don't believe yeah. anything else that you read on the internet it's not <laughs> <an easy> job. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, it's it's definitely not. And I think you do have to have that kind of like passion for your craft and, you know, desire to kind of get your work out there and, you know, and to really kind of, you know, make the pursuit worthwhile. Because like you said, it is time consuming and it's, it's something you need to dedicate yourself to. Um, yeah, so um, obviously um, you're a tutor on the Ultimate Novel Writing course. I think sometimes we have a lot of questions from people thinking that they're not ready to do a course like this or like they're not sure exactly you know like where it will take them and um, what stage it, in people's writing journey do you think they need to be to do a course like this and, and what do you think it, it offers writers um i think you can be at almost any stage providing that you understand that after a year what you come out of it with will be different it won't be the same for everybody yeah. so if you already have a full draft of the novel and you've yeah. never had ed editorial help and you're coming into the full year for the first time yeah. um then there will be certain aspects of your work that we can keep there will yeah. be certain aspects that we may have to recraft um, yeah. which might run from anything to character to plot to subplot or showing, yeah. telling, balance, whatever. Yeah. If you come to the course with um, a handful of ideas and a few uh, failed novels on memory sticks in a box somewhere, that's exactly yeah. where I started when I started many years ago on my master's in creative writing, which at that time mm. Jericho didn't exist yeah um, you know you had to do your, your coaching through university at that time yeah. so it is possible to start this course with a different um starter set if you like 
yeah. you don't have to have a full manuscript but by the same token if you just decide to have a go having only written let's say poetry and you decide yeah. for the first time right okay I'm going to write uh, half a chapter as a test piece and get on the course it will be very difficult for you to write a novel and finish it at the end of the year you may still do that if you can write full time so yeah. it's all about expectations and managing expectations based on what you're taking into it as yeah. to what you'll get out of it yeah for sure so I guess it's just really helpful to kind of just lay out those expectations beforehand so people do go into it knowing exactly you know what they can can expect to achieve um yeah. I think because the, the course is quite intense it's obviously flexible to the writer so you know we have a lot of sessions online and stuff and it does take place over the course of a year but I think what we want to kind of see is writers who are dedicated to their craft applying um because you know we do expect a certain you know standard of, of, of dedication and, and commitment and um, so yeah so that's always I think a helpful kind of starting point um yeah that's that's so interesting and I guess you know just kind of going back a bit to the kind of like genres that you work with you you say you love working with all kinds of kinds of genres um you know I know like specifically um you've you've written um like a lot of science fiction and then your third novel which you, you wrote for your PhD was um I, I guess a kind of um like a literary genre fusion and so a kind of hybrid and um, so what what do you enjoy about playing with like different genres and and just I guess like experimenting um with with combining um typical elements from different genres together um, well, I always think that there's a lot more that historical fiction and science fiction or futuristic yeah. fiction have got in common than first scenes because you have yeah. to make them both up. So we can't really be sure about various aspects of Anglo-Saxon culture. And my third yeah. unpublished novel is part Anglo-Saxon and part futuristic. So, so I found myself just making up aspects of both cultures and seeing that there's actually a lot more in common with these yeah. than you would at first think. So I think that sometimes combining genre elements isn't really as complete the opposite end of the scale as you would expect, yeah. um, which is always useful because, you know, writers have to invent stuff. So where, <laughs> whereabouts on the timeline you invent it is, is almost, it doesn't matter. Yeah. Um, and then thriller elements and mystery elements um, that might happen in the crime genre or the thriller genre are lovely to bring into any novel because they will up the pace and the tempo of absolutely anything science fiction dystopian fiction historical fiction yeah it's always yeah fun. <laughs> yeah it's fantastic and i think it's so true you don't have to like box yourself into like one genre i mean i i i know people have been experimenting for, for loads of years but it feels like more recently people are definitely more open to kind of reading work as well that does does kind of like is more of a hybrid between several and brings in like the kind of best elements and uses them to like a really you know uses them to like a great effect i think it's it's so exciting to see or read work that kind of does experiment in that way and um, for me it's as a reader it's something that I, I i am drawn towards i think because it's offering something new and something unexpected at times and it's you know it really helps to kind of bring you along on that journey I think because it's absolutely yeah and, yeah. and writers like David Mitchell, Jeanette yeah. Winterson, Maya Lund, uh, yeah. writers who do you know unusual genre fusions and timeline yeah. experiments they yeah. have really sort of pushed creative practice along and now all sorts of writers are taking all this on board which is great yeah yeah that's fantastic um so i guess um what i'm also kind of like curious is that so obviously um you do um work um quite a lot as an editor and um i just i think some writers think you know they can just write their book they'll submit it to a publishing house and it'll kind of get published and that, that's kind of it <laughs> and that's how it kind of happens but i think there's you know definitely more steps involved where you know having that kind of mentoring editor or feedback is often really useful if not necessary um, and I think it'd just be interesting to hear from your perspective why you think it's important to get quality feedback from a third party before you even submit to a publishing house. 
Definitely. The, the way that I always explain it to clients is that writing full time is a profession. It's a career. Even yeah. if you only do it part time as a hobby, it's like any career that you need to train for. You couldn't be a lawyer. You couldn't be a doctor. You could, and, and writing a novel takes as many years to work on. Learning yeah. all the tricks of the trade can take just as long. So yeah. if you write a novel without any editorial help and then send it off to a publisher, you don't even know whether you're using novelistic convention to its optimum. And right. I think that because we live in a literate culture and we're yeah. all told by the media, well, anybody can write a novel. What we um, tend to forget is that everybody in every career has input and guidance. Yeah. And the bar for publication is so high that if you don't take input and guidance, you've got no way of knowing whether you've attained an acceptable standard or not. And it's really yeah, sad to so think that, that, that there are so many people out there who are sending, and I know this because my clients tell me this before they come to me for their first editorial, they'll yeah. say that they've carpet bombed London with, with the, or the agents in London with their manuscript <laughs> or, you know, spammed inboxes for you <laughs> and they have absolutely no positive feedback and and to me that's incredibly sad because when I read yeah. some of these writers scripts I can see that how with a little bit of editorial advice and some tweaking of the genre they yeah. can actually become publishable now it's never an overnight job no this is one thing course. that I always say to to clients it's this is a long job because writing fiction is and if you think that you've done all this work without any training and yeah. now you've started your training you're not going to do it overnight but that's normal for all of us exactly. so that's so it is why it's so important to have an editorial input because even best-selling authors constantly yeah. have editorial they do yeah never stops and, yeah and I feel like editors are sometimes the kind of unsung heroes for novels, aren't they? A lot of novels will not be, I guess, the best sellers or, you know, the kind of, you know, where they would, you know, eventually end up being if it wasn't for the, the input of, of several editors along the Absolutely. way. Yeah, so. that's right, editors and publishers. So, so yeah. that's very much sort of, it sits in the background, but that advice and that input is vital. So what I'd say to anybody wanting to take on coaching or start on the novel course is yeah. just be aware that you're going to be asked to make changes because that's the name of the game. We need to elevate your craft. Yeah. And the way that we do that depends on, you know, tapping it back into place along the journey. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, well, yeah, that, that was really, really interesting. Um, thank you. Thank you so much. And I guess it's just something I think, you know, just to kind of get the word out to just help writers so they don't have to go through that process of, you know, the rejection or the negative feedback first. So they know, you know, there's there's things you can do to kind of like skip that step, hopefully, and 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 get your work, you know, to, to the kind of place it can be and get your story told and, you know, hopefully find the success that you want to want to achieve as a writer. So yeah, that's really useful. So yeah, do do obviously um if you are writing, it's just something to consider. Um, Liz obviously herself offers um, editorial services um, and she works very closely with Jericho Writers. So if you're interested in, in that, do check out either Liz's website or the Jericho, web, Jericho Writers website. Um, and Liz is also, um, if you're just joining us, um, going to be tutoring on our Ultimate Novel Writing course, where she will also be offering her services and helping to mentor students. So if you're interested in applying for that, please do um, visit the Jericho Writers website. Um, and just um, to, I guess, quickly say um, that you're, you're currently, you are based in Australia. Um, so if, if you are interested in the course and would like to um, take it um, at a time zone that's more suitable for you, do do apply um, as for, ask for Liz to be your tutor. Um, but I should also say that you accept students from across the globe. So even if you're not based um, at that part of the world and you still would like Liz to be your tutor that is not a problem <laughs> please do send in your application and um, you know there's that flexibility there we can we can work around it um, so yeah. yeah I mean that's fantastic thank you so much um, so I just I'm just kind of curious um, why did you um, want to tutor on the ultimate level writing course what kind of like drew you to, to doing it in the first place um, because it's that um, experience of being able to see the client grow over a longer time to yeah. work with somebody for a year 
you don't always get that chance. Um, quite often mentoring can be in short stints or readers' reports can be, you know, a report with feedback and a little bit of liaison afterwards. But to yeah. actually be able to stick with a client for a year, yeah. I knew that that was going to be the, the best chance to see um, somebody's work just fly off the page over that time with the editorial help. Yeah, yeah. I think it's it's a really kind of like great opportunity, you know, if it's something that is available uh, and an option for you. I think, you know, it's it's a really in-depth course and you're working with fantastic tutors like Liz, who will who really, you know, help to kind of like guide you along your path. So I think, yeah, we're we're really grateful to have you have you on board, Liz. So thank Hello. you so much for doing that with us. I'm really looking forward to the course starting in October. I can't wait. Yeah, it, it'll be fantastic. Um, so yeah, so if you are interested, I'm just going to put the um, link to the website on the bottom of the screen now um, and you can um, visit the Jericho Writers website and find out more um, and also I'll leave the links to Liz's own website and her social media channels um, in the comments so, so do look out for those and please do go and, and follow Liz and check out her website. Um, you know, she, she really is fantastic at what she does. So I couldn't, I couldn't recommend her services more, um, and her her writing more. So um, yeah. So so thank you so much, Liz, um, for joining us today. That's that's been really insightful and just really love talking to you. Um, if if you're watching and you do have any questions for Liz still, um, please drop in the comments. We'll come back and check, and and we'll send them over to Liz and hopefully get those. We will get those answered to you. So yeah, yeah, thank that's you. A, that that'd be great. Anything at all? Um, I, yeah. I'd be delighted to help however I can. That's no problem at all. Oh, yeah, thank th you very much, Kat. It's been lovely to speak to you. Yeah, you too. And fingers crossed, um, the weather in both parts of our world calmed down a bit. Heat waves in the UK and frost in Australia. So, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, fingers crossed that that sorts itself out soon. Um, right. Thank you. Thank you again, everyone, for joining us. Um, we hope you join us again for another another one of these chats on our channel soon. And again, if you are interested in working with Liz, um, do check out the Ottoman Novel Writing Course. Do check out the Jericho website where um, Liz offers her services and numerous other um, parts in services as well. Um, and also check out Liz's website too. So thank you. Thank you, everyone. And we'll see you again soon. Thank you.